Hi, welcome to my channel, Dr. Kathy at your cervix. I'm Dr. Kathy Wolf, and today is Three Minute Thursday. This is where I answer your healthcare questions. Caroline asks, if I've tested positive for HPV in the past, what types of cancer should I be concerned about, and what screening should I have continued while I'm in menopause? HPV is a virus. It's not just one type of virus though, but it is a group of viruses. They are numbered and they're classified into two different categories, low risk and high risk. Low risk means that they're low risk to cause cancer and high risk means it's a high risk to cause cancer. For example, HPV 6 and 11 are considered low risk HPVs and those are what cause genital warts. HPV 16, which is classified as a high risk HPV, causes 70% of all cervical cancers. What cancers are linked to the human papillomavirus? 50% of vulvar cancers are linked to it, 65% of vaginal, 70% of oral, 95% of anal, and virtually all cervical cancers are caused by the HPV virus. The high risk HPV virus causes approximately 5% of all cancers worldwide. And in the United States, it's responsible for 3% of all cancers for women. HPV is a virus that infects our cells. For most women, they have a good immune system and they can clear that infection. What are the screening tests for these types of cancers? There's no standard screening test for oral cancer. It's important for you to go to a dentist who also does an exam of your mouth along with your teeth. The screening for vulvar cancer is on physical exam. That's what I do when you come to the gynecologist and I do your physical exam. Vaginal cancer is also picked up on physical exam, as well as sometimes it can be picked up on a pap smear. And screening for cervical cancer is done through a pap smear. So for vulvar, vaginal, and cervical cancer, you wanna make sure that you're getting your physical exam yearly and your pap smear and you want to do that through menopause. Today, I'm going to change up the Random Act of Kindness Challenge. It's a, it's a known fact that for gratefulness has a lot of positive effects on our health. So today's challenge, I'm going to ask you to write one word in the comments of something that you're grateful for or for someone that you're grateful for. Let's see if we can get 20 people to write what they're grateful for. It'll make us all smile and be a little bit healthier. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I challenge you to write a word or a name in the comments of what you're thankful for. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you on Saturday.